Have you ever felt like political discourse is actually more noise than signal? And while you think about that, here's another one. Can we really trust the media to give us the full, unvarnished truth? Uh, CPAC, do you know what that is? That is the conservative... What is it? Unfortunately. What is PAC? Political <laughs> Action Committee. Political Action Committee. Okay. Yeah. It's their big convention every year. It's like, a, like corporations have a big convention. They have their big convention. I made jokes about it every year. But I can't remember the last <laughs> time we did. It goes way back. I, I, I remember once calling it the Woodstock for the mentally impaired. <laughs> um, and it's, but in years past, it was like the most conservative commentators and senators and governors and Okay, this year, there's a guy, I've heard this name, I don't know who he is, Jack Prozobik. He's doing sort of like a roundtable discussion, you know, it's a convention, they have these things. This is a quote, welcome to the end of democracy, we are here to overthrow it, completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will endeavor to get rid of it. Am I missing an irony here? Is, is, am I missing a joke? Or is it, as it seems now, they are saying the out the quiet part out loud. Yeah. That they are not. This is CEPA. This is their big, this is Republican conservative, their big convention. And you have a guy like this, and the crowd is lo loving it. Welcome to the end of democracy. We're here to overthrow it. January 6th was good. Now we're gonna finish the job. Thoughts? It's scary. Um, <laughs> Thoughts on that? Bill, that was a joke about Trump making a joke about being a dictator day one in office. That is an ironic take on okay. how the liberal that, well, that was my question. Am I missing the irony? Conservatives. I, I think mm, so, yes. It's I, a joke. Really? But, yeah, and I think more, I mean, more to the point. Um, okay. a, a, to, to, to you, Bill, and to, to Keep your day job, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, crew? Welcome back to the show. I'm so glad you were able to make it back. Uh, today, we're talking about the latest blunder from none other than the Titan of Talk himself, Bill Maher. But brace yourselves, because what you're about to see may actually ruffle some feathers. It seems like old Billy Boy might be suffering from TDS. That's Trump derangement syndrome for those of you who are uninitiated. And it seems like this TDS might actually be seeping into every nook and cranny of his once sharp wit. But before we kick in the door to see if Mars TDS is actually taking a toll on his once unassailable show, folks, I just need to say this. If this is your first time here, I'm just gonna ask if you could be ever so kind as to drop a token in the tip cup by hitting that like button because your support fuels the journey. And as you know, I'm grateful for every supporter that I have. Now, let's go ahead and get into the show. People like, this is the problem we were having right now with Trump and, and Biden. Trump, of course, is even more demented and full of dementia. That, and, but they're around the same. But Biden wears it horribly. He, he shuffles and he looks fucking old as dirt. You, and you Trump, Trump is more dementia than Biden? Yes. You didn't just say that. You said the Trump, oh, you like Trump more than Biden? No, no, I mean, you can. In the area of dementia, there's a lot of things you could say. Did you really? Did you see what Trump said this weekend? Yeah, the whole thing about Nancy Pelosi yeah, he, and Nikki Haley. And, right. And then he, you know, somehow, some way, everybody from the media comes out and says, no, 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 that wasn't Nikki Haley who shut down and controlled security. It was Nancy, you know, Pelosi. But to say dementia between the two, I mean, like, look, you know, Biden, you listen to 100 speeches. You know, you can't even, you know, he can't even go through his speeches. Yeah, you know, th this uh, whole subject, I feel like, is kind of the red herring of the election. It, it never engages me that much because like, I know who Biden is and I know who Trump is. We both, we've both seen them a lot. And yeah, they're both not at their life's peak for them. And it's sort of baked in. And I don't think, does it really make me think that it's affecting how Biden makes decisions and runs the country? No, it's not. He doesn't look good running for president. He doesn't look good you know, publicly as president. That's not the important part of being president. The important part of being president is the decisions you make in small rooms where there aren't people around to look at you stutter and where you're not as nervous. I mean, you don't have to make a speech. You can just listen to advisors yeah. and use your wisdom. That's the key part of being and president. you think he does that? Biden, yes, absolutely. You really believe he does that? What do you mean you so, really so, believe? Like, so, like it's, so, like, it's like, a, like, a, like, a, like I'm a cannibal. Yes, I, yes, people really believe it. Like half the country thinks he's done a pretty good job. Yeah, being fair, giving like, what you're dealt with as president and where we are. Really, what, what is so like hard to believe, excuse me, about I think Biden did a good job because what, the economy went in the toilet uh, because we're like losing a lot of our own troops overseas? No, things are fucking good. You think things are good? Oh, Jesus. So, you know, it, Bill, it, that's the part- What are you where, worth? Uh, what am I worth? Yeah, I was worth plenty before Biden. Biden didn't do the money well, for- What are you worth money. now? Ballpark. A few hundred million dollars. A few hundred million dollars. Yeah. 
But you're bitching things aren't oh, good. Oh, I'm not bitching. This, I'm not, you said I, things aren't good. Well, no, no, I'm not sitting here for me. My life's going to be good no matter who the president is. I'm not sitting here worried about uh, uh, my life. I don't think you're going to, I think you were fine under Trump. I think you're going to be fine under Bush. I think you're going to be fine under Obama. I think you're going to be fine no matter who. So it's, there's going to be a percentage yeah. of people, no matter who is president, oh, they're going to be fine. I take your point. Yeah. All right, crew, here's my take on all of this. Uh, Bill Maher is actually a guy who used to be able to cut through the fog of politics with the knife of sharp wit. But now it just kind of seems like he's swinging in the dark. I mean, I really can't believe what I just saw. Can you? Have you ever seen a detective walk right past the evidence? I mean, come on, Bill. The joke was so obvious a child could have got it. Yet here we are dissecting a humor autopsy. I mean, what's going on? Now, I'm a reformed liberal, but back in the day, Bill Maher was the man. I mean, we used to tune into his show just because it was the best in his space. I mean, the man was sharp. He had a tongue like a razor, dipped in honey, sweet but could cut. And now... Now I'm just questioning the entire last sentence. I mean, hard pause on everything I just said about having a sweet tongue. Anyway, what I was trying to say is now it's like he's cutting with a spoon, baby. A spoon. Bill took a swing at a joke about ending democracy, but swung like a blind man at a pinata. Missed the entire joke by a mile. What happened to old Billy boy? The quick-witted maestro who could spot a punchline from outer space. Did he trade his sense of humor in for a soapbox to stand on? Was the soapbox always there and we're just now seeing it because maybe, well, Times are changing. Now, I'm not saying Bill doesn't do his research. I mean, does he? Oh, but come on, man. The whole Google is my friend spiel, it's not just some catchy phrase. It's literally the easiest thing you can do before you open up your mouth on national television. But perhaps that's asking too much. Remember back in the day when we had like five channels and if something ridiculous was said, we'd actually laugh about it over lunch the next day? Now, it's like every word is being dissected under a microscope by a thousand eyeballs before lunch is even served. And this is why I give credit to the masters of their craft. Uh, those who deliver punchlines with the precision of a surgeon or or those who spar with political topics and never afraid to pull punches. They're the ones that have us cracking up on one moment and then have us pondering deep thoughts on the next one. I mean, they show up ready to entertain, informed with research so thorough, it's like they have an encyclopedia hardwired to their brain. Their dedication is something to marvel. I mean, they literally have the ability to turn something mundane into the magnificent, all while making sure we get the entire picture, undiluted, unfiltered, straight, no chaser. Now you and I, we've probably been around the block a few times. We've probably kicked a few tires in our day, right? I mean, that's life experience. But that life experience has taught us that there comes a time when those tires actually kick back. It's like my Uncle Scott used to tell me, nephew, if you're going to be riding a bull, why would I be riding a bull, Uncle Scott? Shut up, try to learn you something. Okay, cool. If you're going to be riding a bull, you better make sure you're holding on to something more than your ego. And it might just be time for Bill to consider if he's still got a grip. Because here's the deal. One of the currencies of our time is authenticity. Genuine dialogue. I mean, the meat and potatoes of conversation. This is why I actually do my best to try and respond to all of your comments. People just don't want the news. They can get that from a scrolling picker. They want to be entertained. They want the story behind the story, the chuckle and the chaos, the human in the headline. Let's face it, folks. Our beloved commentator has turned into the uncle at Thanksgiving who won't pass the gravy boat until he's finished his third back in the day story. The gravy's cold, Bill. The discourse has changed, but somehow it seems like people are just tuning in. I mean, when did we stop laughing with you and start laughing at you? I mean, honestly, I'm only saying what we're all thinking. Bill's like that fighter that's just had way too many fights. Seeing him miss the punchline is like watching Mike Tyson come back for a spelling bee. I mean, you respect the legacy, but bruh, this isn't your ring anymore. So let me ask you this. Are we witnessing the final curtain call of a once great showman? Is it time for a final bow? Or is it just the normal wear and tear that comes with time? A patina, either of something of enduring value or of impending retirement. Folks, if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. I humbly thank you in advance for checking out my other videos. So until the next one, I'll catch you in the comments. I'm gone.